Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. In this episode of the Inner Health series, we will be hearing from two women who are focused on helping athletes recover and perform at their best using their pro method. They believe that psycho- physiological decompression is key to optimizing the way high performers show up in their sport and life because they feel better, they're less stressed and they get more out of their training with their advanced technology. So we're going to be talking to Shante Turner, who you guys have heard on the podcast before. And if you haven't, definitely go back through the archives, type in Shante Turner, go to the category section, go to the T's. It's all in alphabetical order and listen to that episode. It was awesome. And we'll be talking to Don Nasta. So I'd love if Shante, you could start by doing a little intro and then Don, go ahead. Yes. Well, thank you for having me back. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, of course. So, so my name is Shante Turner. I am an IFBB Bikini Pro. I have been competing for 10 plus years. Um, I have had my own coaching team in the past, and then I've you know worked with other amazing coaches in the sport. Um, I started out in figure, then transitioned in at the end of 2016 season to bikini, and I should turn pro in bikini. Um, moved from Houston to Arizona in 2018, and from there, life has just taken a path of its own. And so I met Don since moving here to Arizona, and that's how we became the duo of Don and Shante. <laughs> <laughs> A wonderful duo. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> so, Don, well, tell Don. us who you are. Well, again, thank you for having us. Of Seth. course. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Don Nasta. I've actually been a functional medicine expert. I will say an expert for 10 years, but I've been in the field for 18 years now. I started in digestive health and colon hydrotherapy. And over years that um, progressed into working with some leading performance physicians. And we designed a uh, health collective here in Scottsdale, which tailors to high performance individuals um, in 2014. So uh, in 2013, I started um, competing in the NPC. I've actually competed at a national level in bikini figure and women's physique. And in 2018, I decided to take some time off because I had really found a new love and I was in the process of creating the pro method. So it, for the last few years, I've been utilizing my experience in both functional medicine, digestive health, as well as my athletic and competitive time to develop something that really helps athletes have a much better experience and much better results. So I love it. Um, The Pro Method is actually a combination of some health tech and some modalities that I have designed that help optimize the biomechanics and take away the injuries. And most importantly, get athletes or high performers, because that also does apply to entrepreneurs or um, financial uh, consultants. A lot of people, as long as you're performing at a very high level at whatever you do, even being a house mom, these things involve us giving so much of ourselves that when we do that, we naturally get into a higher states of stress, neural, like nervous Mm -hmm. system wise. And so part of the system helps people get back into that balanced state so they can actually recover and heal quicker. And that's really the foundation of everything we do at the pro method. It's helping your body get into an optimal space 
So the training and the performing is actually able to offer a result because as we have learned, it's not in the teardown or in the performing that the results are created. It's in that recovery process. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys about the methods you use to support recovery. I've been lucky enough to be able to train with Shantae for the past month now every week and it's been yeah. awesome using the newbie so um definitely want to talk about that I want to talk about the electron because I do get to use that and other other tools that you guys have but before we get into that I'm, I would like to know a bit more about what inspired you to join forces with Don Shante when you moved out here you guys connected but why did you want to leave life as you know it behind to do this so I started working with Don um, in uh, last year in I want to say August. So I'm a really big believer that God doesn't make mistakes in my life yes. and that everybody he puts in my life is for a reason and sometimes a season. So it, what's funny is Don had actually reached out to me um, prior to me working with her and I didn't remember that, but I feel that it's because it wasn't time for us to meet yet. Mm -hmm. She was in a different space in her life and I was in a different space in my life. And I think God had his own time and on when we needed to meet. So actually Renee um, told me that I needed to start working with Don. And because I value Renee's opinion, I'm like, say less. So mm -hmm. me and Don, Don started working together because my feedback for literally the last 10 years of competing has been grow your legs, grow your legs, grow your legs. But for me, it was a problem because um, I'm a disabled vet and I have really bad knees, uh, you know, loose kneecaps, no cartilage, um, arthritis, like all the things and back issues. So I can't lift heavy. So growing my legs was just on my, you know, left to my own devices was just not going to happen. But I love the sport. So I just continued to compete. So me and Don started working together every Sunday um, with the newbie. And with all her amazing protocols and fast forward to that was August of 2020 fast forward to um, I want to say March yeah March of 2021 I asked Sandy um, you know for some feedback and you know how are my legs was well, her initial feedback was just get a little tighter which I thought was odd because I have been hearing for 10 years even when I got my pro card she's like you know your whole career, you're going to need to work on growing your quads. I'm like, okay. So for her to say, just get tighter, I'm like, well, Sandy, I have to ask because you've talked about my legs for the last 10 years. Um, you, you didn't even mention them. She's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with your legs. Like, that's one of your biggest assets. So I'm just looking at her so confused. And I'm like, there you say that I have the size now. And I'm just working on conditioning or, you know, being tighter. And she's like, yeah, your legs are amazing. So literally training with Don once a week, my legs have finally reached the point to where I don't necessarily need to work on size anymore. And I never thought I hear today. So on top of those amazing results, me and Don just had the opportunity to just work together and we became closer. And we, you know, we talked about life and kids and our energies just, you know, really died together and we compliment each other. We started looking forward to our weekly sessions and just catching up on the week and, you know, blase blase so fast forward you know she's talking about where she's at in life and in business and things that she was wanting to accomplish and I was kind of you know looking for something that inspired me more or where I felt like I, it gave me more purpose in life and you know I'm very passionate about competing I'm very passionate about empowering women and working with women and encouraging women and so we just kind of it just it was very natural for the both of us it was a very organic relationship and we just decided to join forces and it has and just the whole new fit experience and you know her using her protocols literally was um life changing for me like i would have problems sitting on a toilet and just you know bending to pick something up like life these knees life is just a mess and so just over the time the machine has just really changed the qual my quality of life and and it just, I just became passionate about that. And I just want to help others, you know, achieve that same change and add value to their life in that regard. That's so awesome. I love your personal testimony to that as well. Thank like you. 
Yeah, no, it's really cool. And it's what I think a lot of competitors are looking for is like the next level, right? What can we do to enhance our training and work around any ailments or injuries or struggles that we might be facing, which is pretty inevitable. And especially in your case, it was inevitable. Mm -hmm. And then you have like girls who want to be in this sport for more than 10 years, like yourself. So I was hoping maybe you guys could expand on how the new fit enhances growth development and recovery like how does it actually work Shanti do you want to pick that up or do you want me to start um you can start okay so um the new fit is a direct current e-stim and part of the process um that makes it super significant is and I'm sure you've noticed this Celeste in your personal training is that we start off with a certain pattern which is 500 pulses per second in a direct current. And that is actually what separates that new fit from all of the other e stims available out in the market right now. So at that 500 pulses per second, that's a neuromuscular re-education frequency. So we warm up our athletes or any, any of our clients with that frequency. And it just helps us in that first set see what's going on with the body, making any corrections that we need to. So the body is actually utilizing the proper muscle groups that it needs to for that exercise. And especially in bodybuilding, we know we're looking at symmetry. We know we're looking at balance. So when you start to have injuries or compensations, inevitably you're going to develop asymmetries or imbalances if that isn't recognized and corrected. So what we do with the new fit is we can, there is a a mapping and a scanning capability. So if we weren't focusing on something very specific and there was an injury involved, we can actually scan with the new fit and find out where neuromuscular disconnections are. But in where we're just really sculpting and building a physique, we place the pads strategically on the body. And then we start with the 500 pulses per second. And then we go into different hypertrophy settings and patterns dependent upon the client's needs. But as you you might have noticed, Celeste, in between, so when you do your working set, you're on a specific frequency. And then when you're in rest in between your sets, we put you back into the 500 pulses per second, which is telling your nervous system to get back into recovery. So basically throughout your training time for that hour, we're, we're teaching your body. We go from performance to recovery, performance to recovery. And we hope that as your body adapts to that pattern, and we have seen this to be proven to be true, that you will get into recovery faster. And that's what really helps with that additional muscle gain is the body's ability to repair in its recovery time. It's not really so much how much we're tearing it down during that period. And then again, we're really isolating and focusing on contracting specific groups and also removing compensatory muscles. So for example, with your shoulders, we often see, especially with females or every, well, it's more noticeable and important for females in our industry because we really don't want that trap development. The men can get away with that a little bit more, but we can actually diffuse the trap from working with pads at a certain frequency while concurrently forcing the shoulders to work. So we can actually take out those muscles that are trying to do the work for the muscles we want to work and also force them to grow more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this kind of goes back to your earlier point too, of it's not so much the the training that matters as much as the actual recovery that's going to contribute to the results that you have. And if this can support recovery, then we're looking at more positive growth and development. And you mentioned that where you place the new fit pads, and excuse me if I mix up the words, but no, where you place the pads matters. So how do you determine the best place to put them? Um, And does it change based on what division someone competes in? Yes, absolutely. It does. So um, if we are looking at somebody who has a noticeable injury and that is what's interfering with their proper movements, then that's when we would apply the scanning technology and we would find out where the disconnect is and we would place those pads there to force those muscles to relax and release that are overguarded and then to force the muscles to fire that have been atrophied. 
-hmm. However, when we're doing body sculpting and bodybuilding and focusing on hypertrophy, they're really padded to maximize the current through the muscle group that we are working. So back is going to be padded a very specific way. And it is somewhat customized as the body changes. We can actually change where the pads are just to allow a little more focus in specific areas. So it's, that's really great for, again, when we're doing something like um, glute ham tie-ins or rear delts, because those are sometimes more challenging areas to focus because they're a small muscle group surrounded by a lot of large, powerful muscle groups. So you don't always really feel the ham, the glute ham tie-in or the rear delts the same way you can feel other, um, mm -hmm. other larger muscles. So we can utilize the pads to really focus and intensify the client's ability to feel the contraction. And that also leads to greater results down the line, because once you can get your clients to focus on what that feeling is, then they can recreate it on their own. So they're getting more benefit out of their own personal training as well. Yeah, I've definitely and noticed a huge, difference in that. Oh, no, go ahead. Shante. I yeah, I was going to say we were yeah. both had this experience. So go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that's really and that was I think I want to say is a huge part of um, for me, when, you know, when I started training with Don, I didn't have this level of detail as to how it would affect and benefit me moving forward from each training session. But just over the time, I didn't realize because of my knees and back, all of the, the core uh, compensation patterns I had just developed over the years because I had been in pain for so long, it just became a way of life for me. So training weekly on a new fit because it, it does affect your body on a cellular level and it is, you know, neuromuscular. I learned and develop um, the correct way to train on my own when I wasn't training under the new fit. So literally, you know, I train legs twice a week. So I would do Sunday with the new fit and then Thursday on my own. And so my Thursday sessions became so much more um, intentional and, and, and just powerful and the muscle fibers were firing more and I wasn't using, you know, other body parts to try to, you know, lift for glutes and, all the things. And I think we've even had the conversation with you. We train once a week on shoulders and you've even said like when you're training without the new fit, your, your, your activation is on another level now. And mm -hmm. again, that's because the, the new fit is, you know, enhancing and affecting you on a cellular level. And that, that's the biggest difference between, you know, the newbie versus the, the other machines that are out there on the market. Yeah, I love it. I, I've honestly enjoyed it so much. And something that I've noticed aside from just the way that I engage the muscles is also your attention to detail and how you've trained mm -hmm. me with it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm able to perform better versus, I don't know, versus not. And you guys used a keyword, which was muscular re-education. So can you expand yeah. on this word and how because this is the inner health series, I want to, you know, talk about how utilizing these technologies can support competitors in their bodybuilding journey beyond surface level too. So what is muscular reeducation and then how do these different tools you use support someone in, let's say their longevity or their health and in the long term in this sport? The term well, is actually... is a real, no, go ahead, Doc. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to just say, like, on a more layman's term, because it muscular re-education is kind of like what I just described, you know, we just over time, when you're in pain, or you never learn how to live properly, you just, you, you just develop these patterns, rather, you know, they're compensating for something, or just, you know, just poor patterns, because you didn't learn how to train properly. And just like anything, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, that just becomes a norm for you. So when you're um, when you're training under the new fit and you're being, you know, directed with the proper, you know, um, form and what have you, it re-educates your brain to train that way when you're not using the machine, if that makes sense, on, mm -hmm. on just the most basic level. So again, when I wasn't training on the new fit and training on my own, I was able to train properly and hit the proper targeted groups and not overtrain or, or add more injury to my knees because I was trying to compensate for the pain. And same thing, like you were saying, you know, when you work your shoulders now, you're activating them way uh, more intentional and you feel it versus before when you just, just neurologically, you just wasn't really connected to the muscles. A lot of, 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of women, especially, have a hard time with glute activation because they can't they can't um, neurologically connect to that muscle. So nine times out of ten, just training one session on the new fit for your glutes to kind of help with that activation and that muscle mind connection. Your next workout is ten times better, and obviously, if you do it more often, you know you pick up the proper. Uh, behaviors and compensation and you just train better but same concept okay yes but go ahead yes. Don. and so yeah so neuromuscular re-education um and again this device is actually fda approved for that concept so in order to be fda approved you know that ha concept has to be proven so at 500 pulses per second that is the neuromuscular re-education frequency so with that being said, it's not even just in the fact where that it's sending a signal to the brain. And so that is the benefit of this device. It's really enabling the mind muscle connection because when those pads are on, it's sending a signal to the brain to fire these specific muscles or to relax these specific muscles, depending upon what your goals are. So with that being said, um, it's not just specific to bodybuilding per se, but for example, like golfers or um, baseball players with their repetitive motions, if you're wanting to optimize a repetitive motion, in theory, with, with doing it on your own neurological capabilities, it's going to take thousands of repetitions before your brain recognizes that as its proper patterning. With adding the, the current and the neurological signal that the newbie offers, you're actually able to do that same result instead of thousands in dozens. So it's, that's what, when you're in, when you're doing your lateral raises, and that's why it's so important for us to really work with. And that's, again, something Shantae and I, and I'm really appreciative that you recognize that. Because that's something Shantae and I really focus on. If we have you on a neuro on a neuromuscular re-education frequency and you're just in there throwing around weights and moving things and you're not really focusing on isolating and being intentional with your movements, you're actually reinforcing to your brain that that improper movement is the actual movement. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um because there, there are a lot of different things and a lot of different ways to practice, but that's why you'll see what, what we do is very, very, very intentional. And we're really only liking to see two or three like um, improper movements before we'll stop because we really don't want to reinforce the negative patterns because it goes against like what we're looking for. And the no, results. I like that. Yeah, that that makes really yeah. perfect sense. And I think um, I, I actually want to hear the difference between now a direct current versus something else, because you said that's what separates this machine from others. So I want to know more about that now. Oh, sure, sure. So a direct current is actually what you what it, what it sounds like, right, that the current is constantly going your nervous system, the human nervous system is also a direct current. So it's already in more natural alignment with the physiology of our bodies to be a direct current. So already we're going to be a little more receptive to that anyhow. Now, a direct current, whereas it's con continuous, an alternating current is going on and off, on and off, on and off. An alternating current can only allow for contractions. So it only allows a muscle to contract. With the new fit newbie at the 500 pulses per second, we're actually able to do the exact opposite, which is we're able to force a muscle to relax and release and lengthen. And that is usually what is the huge benefit, especially in compensation patterns, asymmetries, or injuries, because the body is our friend. It's always trying to protect us. It might not do it in the way in which we desire it to do so, but that's what it's always trying to do. So when the body is injured or when it's injuries and imbalances are very similar, they're, they're actually the same thing. It actually locks down and guards. So if you're taking an alternating current and putting it on those areas, it's already locked down. It's already hyper contracted. So it really doesn't have the same benefits as the direct current at that 500 pulses per second 
because we're able to go in and force it to the muscles to relax and release that are too tight, that are injured, that are hypertonic, that are locked down. And then that allows more movement and fluidity in the body. And it makes the muscles look rounder, fuller, more shapely. A lot of times people think that their muscle, they don't have certain muscles or they don't have round muscles or um, that their muscles look hard and edgy. And then when in reality, it's just that they're hypertonic and they need to be relaxed and released. And that's something we actually have just, just um, recently have started doing uh, in the last year and a half, I guess, for our competitors is we're able to go in and relax and release all of those muscles that are locked down and preventing, um, let's say, figure and physique and bodybuilder athletes from opening up. Those muscles have gotten so tight and so contracted in the back that they are, there's a lot more width they're just not able to open because they've trained so hard through their prep to reach their goals. Well, I could totally see that. And it's, it's similar. Or it reminds me of when you see like really specialized massage therapists who work directly with bodybuilders who are able to release the muscles in such a way that it actually improves the way that they look. Um, and I can imagine that if you're focused on recovery weekly or even throughout many of your sessions during the week, it's going to make a difference. And I'm immediately now thinking of Jen Ron, and she had made a post about her shoulder being injured or hurting and using um, the new fit with you and how that helped her. So is this an example of like recovery and injury as well as growth? Or maybe could you share an example where you saw an athlete who was able to actually change their structure? Yes, absolutely. So Genron is one. She was um, with, she was doing an activity where she was playing at like an entertainment center and she swung and it did, so, it actually caused part of her shoulder to lock down. And so she couldn't really do any front raise motions for a period of time. So um, Damien talked to me about it and thought that it might be a possibility of helping. So we went in with the Electrons Plus and we released those areas that were tight and that had started to guard and shut down in order to protect the body. And then we padded because obviously during that time period when she wasn't here training with Damien, she wasn't able to do the front raise motion. So that one side was obviously lagging a tiny bit because she wasn't able to do that movement without experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. So what we were able to do is then go in and pad that area and get that muscle to start firing. So we started off with the single arm until both arms started to look more similar in symmetry and balance. And then we were able to incorporate both as she went into Olympia. And then we also obviously did some of the recovery reset components as well, just to get her body back into that state of recovery so she could continue to improve and to grow. Um, another, great, um, another great example is Whitney Jones, um, Miss Fitness Olympia. And she is another one because of all of her requirements due to her routines, her body is always trying to compensate and trying to guard. Um, and I actually do have, we have not moved it over to the pro method page yet, but on the intrigue health page, you can actually see a few of those examples that are before and after one of them being Whitney, where it was less than a day, but her physique looks completely different. Um, mm -hmm. Another one that is actually on that page as well is um, IFBB figure pro Katie O'Neill. And those, um, those examples were less than an hour apart. So it was actually one treatment and she was able, her whole physique looked completely different just because everything had locked down and it looked like there wasn't muscle there that did actually become apparent after the treatment. Now, is this a result of the nervous system being relaxed and recovered or is it more so a result of the loosening of different muscles that are tight? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Is, is that a result more so of the nervous system being relaxed through the recovery process or is it more so a result of loosening tight muscles? 
So that component would be more relative to releasing muscles that are, are locked down. So that's not as relevant to the nervous system at that point. Got that's it. really more trying to just get those muscles that have started to guard to release so they can be more mobile and get blood flow. Because a lot of the times when a muscle is locked down, there it's locked down and hypertonic until it gets to a point where it can no longer withstand that pressure. And then it just becomes atrophied. Mm. And so at that point, we can basically like charging a battery, we use the new fit to put that energy back in and get that focus. And like contraction, and it, it just really, it, it just really allows the body to do what it already wants to do. Yeah. Right. Cause your body, no matter what is always just doing the best she can for you. And if we right. can support her in that, then ultimately we're going to be able to perform better or she will perform better for us. And I think that recovery is something that's luckily been talked about way more in the industry. I'd say in the last like two years, especially, it just seems to be even more prominent. It's really awesome. Um, and there's different technologies like what you guys are talking about that can help. Can you maybe explain, and Shantae, I don't know if you want to touch on this, but how is recovery important for building muscle and burning fat? Cause these are like two really key goals for competitors usually, or, or even maintaining muscle while burning fat. So obviously if the body's not recovered, like Don said, like we don't get the changes um, that we're designed to get when we're actually performing the, the actions of working out and all that, we get it during recovery. So if we're constantly, and we are known to do it, and a lot of us have been doing it, especially if a competitor like myself, I didn't get passionate about recovery until, like you said, maybe the last two years, but we're notorious for day after day, year after year, and some of it's, you know, out of ignorance, um, taxing our nervous system and just overtraining, and just by default, that's what the sport and industry is, you know what I mean? So if we don't take the time to, or just have the knowledge or the resources to um, recover, and a lot of it is, is sometimes it's a little time consuming. And that's what I love um, about the pro method is the electrons plus, which we're going to let Don go into more details about that amazing machine, but the electron plus kind of cuts that down in half the time. It takes the guesswork out of the recovery. And that's what she's more or less referring to when she's talking about um, Jen Ron and Katie opening, um, op releasing those locked up muscles so that their physique was able to open up and look completely different after one session like that is where you, she's using the electrons plus, but it takes the guesswork out of it. So if you're just kind of, you know, if you're experienced, if you're experienced PT, you can probably figure it out, but it takes the guesswork out of it. It's less painful for the athlete to where their body doesn't um, lock up and start guarding itself through pain. When you're trying to like release the psoas or re release something that's painful, the body is naturally going to guard itself against that. And it's gonna be harder to get those results with the Electron Plus. Um, makes it to where the body doesn't necessarily do that and then you're able to do that and and not half the time but half the time and mm -hmm. the results last a lot longer again because the actual experience of her releasing those areas wasn't traumatic itself to the to the muscle or the body if that makes mm -hmm. sense so yeah, it does so for me, yeah. I just find that um, using our own methods and working with Don like she is literally the goat um, mm -hmm. And because she's Aww, a competitor so too, she, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just speaking the truth and she's, and she's a competitor too. So she knows exactly what we go through. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we come in thinking it's one thing and she's like, no, it's actually not that it's this. And let me release this and you'll be a whole new human in like 30 minutes, <laughs> like 30 <laughs> minutes. But again, um, without an eye like Don's and without the technology that we use, uh, most people um, don't even know what needs to be fixed. And then they just continue to train under those conditions because they either don't have the time because it's very time consuming, or they just don't, they don't, they don't know, you know, what needs to be fixed or worked on. So if you're not doing some right. type of recovery um, two to three times a week, then you are, the sport is going to retire you before you retire the sport. That's a hundred percent fact. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And I think that I really love some of the points that you touched on, Shante. Um, and I think that that's a really great point. When our body experiences trauma, it starts to produce different things in order to protect itself. And one of those obviously is going to be cortisol or adrenaline. And your body is going to try to protect you against some of those things. So that's the one thing that I know that Shantae and I have had such amazing results with in regards to the recovery aspect and utilizing the frequency devices opposed to just manual therapy. So for example, I don't know how many people have been able to go in or who have tried to go in and get their psoas release or their subscap release. And as a women's physique athlete, I was going in and trying to get my psoas release twice a week manually. And it's a pretty painful experience, right? <laughs> a big manual therapist comes in and like basically presses right in between like my hip and my groin and says, lift your leg up, move it in and out while they're continually pressing. Well, it's really, really painful. And as much as I'm trying to release it and trying to relax, my body think, is like, what the heck are you doing? Like you're imposing trauma. <laughs> and so it doesn't fully, it, it, it hurts. Number one, you're guarding number two. And what I saw myself, which was really, really frustrating as a competitor, especially in prep is it wasn't, it didn't last. So if I was going twice a week and I, it was the exact same twice a week and I'm having to take the time to drive there, do the treatments, drive home, which as we all know, during prep, it's hard to find those hours that I, it, mm -hmm. I was really, really, really frustrated. And so th that's actually what led me to develop and invest in the new fit to begin with, then add in the electrons plus, and then to design the method itself, which includes a few other proprietary things as well, was that as a women's physique athlete, I was having to overtrain so much to make the changes and maintain the muscle mass that I needed. But my nervous system was completely debilitated and I just wasn't responding in my last prep. Like I was, my metabolism wasn't working the way that it should. I do very, very regular blood work. So I was paying attention to all of those things. And, you know, my colleagues kind of came to me and said, Hey, here's the deal. Either a, you have to find and implement something into your training that doesn't tax your nervous system as much, or you're going to have to look at something else to, help your body withstand this level of intense training biochemically. So I did some research and that's when I actually found the new fit and started to implement that protocol, but it's made a tremendous amount of difference because your body isn't guarding so much against what you're trying to accomplish. And as we know, when you're in bodybuilding, it's not easy on your body. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, it, so. It's a challenge. There's a reason why not everybody does it. There's a reason why, you know, there are the great ones are the great ones and you have to include all of those aspects. And I'm really, really, really grateful because as you said, in the last, it's only been in the last few years that we're talking about working smarter and we're talking about recovery because mm -hmm. up until then it was no days off, push, 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 <laughs> give more, give more. And I get it. <laughs> I get it. Still out there. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're doing that, and that's the thing, when your body goes into that state of adrenaline and overtraining, you go into fight or flight. And mm -hmm. if you are in fight or flight, your body is not in rest and digest. And if you're not in rest and digest, you're not in recovery and you're not able to use the food and the nutrients to your, uh, to your ability to build that lean muscle. And your body is not focused on lean muscle because it's focusing on trying to make sure that you know your body is not overloaded because your blood is too thick and your adrenaline's too high and you're so stressed because your body is going to deal with the stress and the things mm -hmm. that th those are a much higher priority level to survival than putting on some extra muscle or tightening so your body's going to choose that over the lean muscle if it has to well yeah and like having a ton of muscle doesn't necessarily make you more efficient as a body like your body's right. looking for right. energy safety and protection so part of I think going and working hard and putting all your eggs in this and like all or nothing whatever we want to say going harder going home really is I think taking on a new form of 
well, what does it mean if we're if we are in a sport where we're working against our body's natural inclination to to harbor energy and, and utilize it more efficiently, then we need to support the body in feeling like it's in this pretty much homeostasis so that we can maximize our efforts rather than taxing it out of homeostasis so much that we're working against our body even more because those natural fight fight responses to protect are turned on and all the way up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the same thing applies for eating too. Like, I just want to mention this. I'll get, I'll get off my soapbox in a second, but like when you're, when you're going through, let's say like eating disorder behaviors, binge eating, or um, you're eating really quickly, you're not eating mindfully, even just as a competitor, we tend to get into these um, like mindless and autopilot modes is what I call them eating behaviors where we just eat the meal and move on with our life. But I always stress this Mm -hmm. to my clients and people have been to my events have heard this, but if we can get our body into that parasympathetic state that Don was talking about, we will utilize nutrients more effectively. And so rather than, you know, just thinking, oh my gosh, this food is terrible for me. Like if you're, let's say eating something you wouldn't normally eat, trying to just relax this body and like get into a state of enjoyment and acceptance for the food that you're eating and how it's going to nourish you will get you so much more primed to actually use it rather than being stressed and then getting bloated and gassy and wondering why you're not making the progress you want to make or why your body's so inflamed. It's like, well, we have to put in the effort to support our body to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's also why colon hydrotherapy is also an an inclusive part of the pro method. Yes. Talk to us about this. I really think this is a weird and interesting thing. So talk to (laughs) us about it. (laughs) So I have been a colon hydrotherapist for almost 18 years and I've worked with athletes and clients of all types, all ages. Um, I've even had, you know, 12, 13 year old um, clients with IBS whose parents brought them in in order to, and there are child sites speculum. So it doesn't, it does it, it, it can actually offer the same results, you know, with, with more comfortability, even for children and small people. Um, just again, that's something to consider, but so I work with something called a closed system. There are two different types um, with a closed system. All of the stuff stays inside the system. So there's no sound, there's no smell, there's nothing like that. There is a speculum that's inserted about two inches into the rectum. And basically I slowly fill water into the large intestine, which is six feet long. And again, this might be pretty remedial, but I think for competitors who aren't super familiar with anatomy, it would make a big set. It would make a lot of sense. So your large intestine actually, you know, travels from basically, you know, in between your legs up to your belly button. Then it basically makes an S curve down into your lower hip. It travels all the way up to that rib cage. Then it transverses all the way across like where your diaphragm is from rib cage to rib cage. Then it goes downward and it stops in that hip bone. So there's a lot of potential and that that large intestine can also expand as needed to store more matter. So One thing I tell people and especially competitors, but this applies to everyone is if you are starting to have significant digestive issues, the first thing you want to try to do is find something to help recover your nervous system. Because like I said earlier, if you go into fight or flight, your nervous, your parasympathetic nervous system isn't working effectively. So stuff's just not moving, metabolizing, being broken down. That can lead to foods fermenting, putrefying inside that, that all leads to additional gas and bloating. So digestive dysfunction um, can really be remedied. If you start to do some stress modification components Um, for someone like me, I'm very, very type A. I do not know how to physiologically decompress. I meditate. I do EFT. I go see a healthcare provider to help with it as well. But the only thing that I have actually found and have tested to help my nervous system get back to where it needs to be is the master reset component 
the, that comes from the new fit newbie. So it's a very simple process where you actually, it's a, it's, it's active recovery, but you are lying down and you have some pads pay, um, placed strategically at your occiput and then at the bottom of your feet. And that 500 pulses per second, which is the relaxing and releasing frequency is running through your entire body at the same time, as well as your body's natural frequency, because that's the way that the inventor Garrett was able to get your body to receive the direct current and how powerful it is is by marrying it with the body's natural frequency. So during that master reset, as you're lying there, your body, your, your neuromuscular system, which is your nervous system and your muscular system, has the current running all the way through it, telling those to relax and also saying, hey, don't forget, this is actually where we vibrate by putting your body's natural frequency through there. Mm, that's cool. And it, yes, and we can, we've actually measured the, the HRV, the heart rate variability on the bio strap on the whoop band, and then on some clinical grade biometrics to recognize that that happens in between 35 and 45 minutes, depending on the stress level and the individual. So it's, a, it's a, a crazy, it's exceptional. It's an exceptional um, therapy as well, but those two combined together really help that body get into that balance and really focus on the rest and digest and getting, you know, your food to metabolize and be able to be assimilate, assimilated and utilized effectively, and also removing the waste that is constantly being recycled if it's not removed otherwise, because your large intestine is a reservoir. And so as your body needs more hydration, it will actually pull from your large intestine to get the fluid. Well, as it's pulled, that stuff from the large intestine in fit. So the more that we can get that in and start to remove the other toxins that are stored in the tissue or being um, like being put through the system of your immune system and lymphatic system and all of that stuff. Okay, got it. So you broke up a little bit, but I, the words kind of sped up and we could hear uh, what you said. It's a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You were just breaking up a little, but we, I think we got the, the viewpoint of it because it okay. still captured what you said. So that was really helpful. What went through my head though, is how easily this could potentially be abused by someone. Um, so how often should someone do something like colon hydrotherapy? So that really depends on the, per the person and the condition. So if somebody has been sick for a long time and we do have an extended stay opportunity where people can come stay and they can get multiple treatments throughout the facility. And under those circumstances, they may have three in a week, but that's because they often don't live in the same city in the same state. So we're really trying to expedite that process until they can get continuity of care wherever they live. So um, I recommend to my clients to utilize colon hydrotherapy like you would a teeth cleaning. If you think about it, it's the opposite end of that exact same canal. The bacteria is a little bit different and obviously, but it's still the exact same canal. It's just the other end. So some people like to get their teeth cleaned every four months. Some people like to go every six months. Some people like to have their their teeth cleaned every year. You know, it's really all dependent upon what your preferences are. My goal with my clients in the pro method as a whole is to help people develop the self-awareness to know, oh, hey, maybe I need this now, or, oh, I'm having digestive dysfunction and really get them to recognize those situations within themselves without me having to be the person to dictate. I, I mean, I really want to empower others to learn their, their body, not for me to kind of be the one to tell them what's the best for their body, because it's kind of, you know, teach a man to fish, give a man a fish, that whole theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 totally. That is how it should be. Like we want to learn how to look after and listen to our body. I mean, athletes are so good at being in tune with our body. If, if we can get even more connected, that's awesome. Absolutely. And, and, in my years, I have discovered that there are a few potential dangers with colon hydrotherapy. 
The only two that um, have been scientifically proven are your electrolytes can get imbalanced. And that's just because you're putting in a huge amount of fluid at once, which is obviously going to dilute some of the, um, some of the electrolytes and minerals. So I always give clients an electrolyte when they leave so they can um, try to rebuild that or minimize any issues that could have happened, but which are minimal. And then the other concern would be um, if your internal bacteria would get imbalanced because that bacteria is also supportive of your immune system. So if people aren't on a good probiotic or don't um, have a fair amount of probiotic whole foods, I will use, I will always recommend that I put in a probiotic implant at the end of a session, which is basically after the session is done, I basically insert about two tablespoons um, of a very high grade um, probiotic into the rectum. And it basically just goes where it needs to immediately and can help um, balance out any possibility of those probiotics being lessened. Interesting. No, that's really insightful. And I appreciate you sharing the potential risks and how someone could mitigate that as well. Um, I want to talk to you guys about posing now because we've covered um, a lot of the inner health stuff. I, unless there's something I didn't ask about inner health that you think that we should cover before we move on. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, Shantae was telling me that you guys are using this on competitors when they're posing too. And I would love to hear how that works and why it might be different or more beneficial than, or maybe beneficial to incorporate in general. This is Shantae's specialty, so I'll let her take it. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Get a sip of water, Don. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, so we mainly, um, and again, remember the whole um, neuromuscular um, Mm -hmm. retraining the brain compensation has all of that with when it comes to the new fit under the 500 frequency so we will put those on areas um, when you're posing that um you may not that may not flex or fire like you need to or you need to again your posing needs to be second nature so most of our girls will put it we'll put the pads on their glutes or their um shoulders or um, you know, the Rodell area, that, that sort of thing, and have them go through their routines. And even in your, um, on your obliques to kind of help with your breathing and hold them in your, um, your core control and all those things. So it's the same concept so that your, it's, your posing is more or less second nature and you're training your brain to, to move right and to hold your poses and do all of that as it should be on stage. And the sessions are usually about 30 minutes because anything really more than that can be counterproductive when it comes to posing. So, yeah. Don, you want to get more technical with it? No, I think or you did. No, you're question. great. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Maybe okay. talk about, but you know what? Because this pertains, maybe talk about some of the vacuum work that you do too to help with posing. Oh, yeah. So, um, so Don made a really good point this week of just how um, over the years when we work abs, we're so used to doing con crunches and contracting that our, we develop our muscles to just, they look a little shorter and tighter and we just don't, um, those muscles in those areas don't release like they should and typically look like they should. Mm -hmm. And so with the uh, machine, we can put it in the frequency where you're lengthening the muscle. And so I actually had the um, opportunity to see her uh, performed that on one of her clients this week and to see the immediate difference. So of course, you know me, I had it all on Instagram. I yeah. put together my own little routine. So I have like really large fibroids. So for me doing vacuums in my lower abdomen is almost virtually impossible. And I can't get that area to contract like it should. So I was able to use the new fit to um, help stimulate that area and get those contractions for me. And then I spent probably about 15 minutes on the um, lengthening frequency while I perform the vacuums to try to, again, improve my breathing and tighten in that area. And for just anybody who do doesn't necessarily have fibroid issues, but just have a hard time engaging that area and doing vacuums, we can also help with that and get that area conditioned. Oh, well, that's really interesting. How about for people who are postpartum? Oh, absolutely. Same concept. I mean, well, you haven't had a baby, but we really lose <laughs> another um, 12 years or person. so. We'll talk about <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> 12 years. But um, <laughs> we really, 
especially for women that may have had C-sections, you, it's kind of hard to um, regain that control of those l- lower abdomen areas like that. So mm-hmm. same concept, we can pat that area to help them um, reconnect with those muscles and regenerate those um, tissues down there and help, you know, engage the core and tighten the area and, you know, all the things. Yeah, no. And I, I wonder too, my mind's just going a few different directions as I'm listening, but I'm thinking we're talking about how you're re-educating the muscles. Also, if you're, mm-hmm. um, if you're supporting the muscles in their recovery, they're going to loosen. I imagine then if, if you're also having more productive training sessions, this could support mm-hmm. maybe the visibility of loose skin too. Cause you're actually going to potentially, I would imagine fill out a little bit more easily. Um, Absolutely. I don't know. Don, does it? Okay. Yes. Yes, it will because often, right? Like if it can help with some loose skin, a lot of times with loose skin, it's because the muscle or the under it isn't full, right? So which is a which allows that the looseness of the skin to appear. Yeah. Now, obviously, yeah. yeah. It obviously in some spaces, like I, we have had a lot of clients who have had amazing transformations where they've lost a hundred pounds. 90 pounds under those situations, there can be loose skin and there's really not anything that we can do about it. And often it, it just either has to be kind of, you know, accepted or, you know, there are some plastic surgeons who can deal with removing that skin, but for minor situations where somebody, um, has just needs more fullness, that's exactly what the new fit newbie does. And that's actually what we do for our pump up protocols. So we actually go in, um, for, for all the 11, Olympians that I worked with um, in 2000, in 2020, um, I, that's actually what I did. I pumped them all up before they went on stage. So because you can maintain that pump for about 36 hours. Hmm. So yeah. we, we measure it with the athletes going in. Um, we kind of tell them, hey, pay attention, see how long you stay full. And, you know, as you can tell, Celeste, I'm sure you noticed that you still kind of have fullness and, and you feel, um, like those muscles have blood flow and look better for a good 36 hours, even after training, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's longer, but yeah. Um, um, my experience, go ahead. Sorry. Go, no, go ahead. My experience with, um, and I was telling Don this season, um, and every athlete is going to be different and obviously level of conditioning can affect the appearance of things. But I figured out with me, um, when I get, when I do use a new fit for glutes, my glutes can, I mean, it can hold that pump for three to four days easily. I was just like, I got to the point where I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't use it outside of, you know, maybe do my glute workout the Friday before peak week, because my pump literally can last that long in my glutes. Again, every athlete's different, but also I want to bring up the point because I've had a lot of people ask me, um, when it comes to cellulite, like I used to have the biggest issue with cellulite on my legs. Um, when I would get to a certain weight in the off season, we all know cellulite is just like fat pockets. That's just fat cells that aren't distributed properly due to water or whatever, you know, inflammation, anything can be going on in the body. However, for me, I have noticed, and I've been like raving to Don about this, um, since training with the new fit every week, um, I do not get the cellulite in the off season when I, gain my 10 to 15 pounds of you know body fat in the off season my cellulite has not returned and to me again I didn't even think about it I that being one of the benefits but again it's just that rejuvenation in that and that how it just affects the direct current affects you on a cellular level so now I don't even get the cellulite in the off season and I'm I've made that um, point to a lot of my clients. So now they're actually starting to pay attention to that and see like how long it takes for things like that to start improving, or that could be one of the benefits. But I know for me, it's improved my cellulite like a hundred times over. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I love that. I, I'm, as you know, learning to embrace my cellulite more. I'm just like, okay, I don't judge <laughs> I mean, anything. We have yet. to, it's a part of life. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> exactly. But it is really cool when you can notice these types of changes and differences in your physique yeah. and know that it's a direct result of your efforts, which I think is mm -hmm. so rewarding. Um, and I just love hearing about these different methods you guys have. And honestly, I'm thinking I've had really good experiences with the training sessions we've done. Also, that first day I came in to um, the collective that you guys were at and it was awesome to have that electron on me too. Like I was, I think about mm -hmm. that sometimes I reminisced on, I'm just like, my so <laughs> Hey, <so> come, come <laughs> in. <laughs> Anytime. I'm happy to do it. I'm oh happy my goodness. To do it. <laughs> awesome. I'll take you up on that. But seriously, it's been really cool just for me to utilize over the last, like, like I said earlier, a bit over a month. And I wanted to have you guys on the inner health series because I, one, I love the mission of the pro method. And two, I've, noticed a difference and three because of how important recovery is and everything you guys shared I think really really highlighted that so I want to know how people can work with you guys maybe get in touch whether if that's they need to come and see you where can they find you or if they want to just connect online how can they do that you can answer Shante um and we we oh. did recently set up um schedule at the pro method to make it easier because we are bringing on a concierge we're mm -hmm. grateful but we are growing and up until now we've been doing our own scheduling and it's probably not as effective as we would like it to be so we're going to have somebody kind of help us on that concierge side so um it's schedule at the pro method.com and then I guess Shante can tell the other areas to contact us they can act, they can also reach out to the website is still under um, construction, but they can also reach out to us on Instagram through DMs if they want. They can go to uh, the Pro Method um, at the Pro Method on Instagram. Um, we would prefer those two locations, but of course you can always reach out to us um, individually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Turner's um, underscore Turnfits. Uh, I think underscore IFBB Pro. Um, I'm sure you'll put all that in the, um, mm -hmm. it'll be in the description, notes. but yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can go up to the schedule email address, or you can reach out to the pro method, um, at the pro method on Instagram directly and myself and Don check those. Awesome. I will put all of that in the show notes page. And if you guys have your website up and running too, by the time this is released, just send it to me whenever, cause I can update the notes. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. And you guys listening, the notes are always updated at celestial.fit slash podcast. If you scroll down to the category section for this episode, it'll be in the inner health series. It'll also be under the pro method. And I'm going to put it under um, Shantae's categories too, just so you guys can have it all in one place and see um, the different. Yay. Yeah, there'll be notes, timestamps. So if you guys want to go back and hear about different benefits of what we talked about, it'll all be timestamped for you. Um, and with that being said, thank you guys so much for coming on and talking and connecting this is really fun and to everyone listening thank i hope you guys loved it thank you so thank much you for, for having, having us. us of course of course stay on the line you guys i'm gonna let everybody else go hope you all have an amazing rest of your day night or morning wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode thank you.